I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I started an eco-conscious pottery company called Oxford Clay. So I don't just make pottery, I make resources for other potters wanting to be more eco-friendly in their pottery practice. And that's what this podcast is all about. It's about sharing everything I've learned along my eco-conscious pottery journey with you. And I'm so glad you're here with me. Let's go. Welcome back to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. Um, I'm Catherine Tomlinson and in today's episode we're going to be talking about making your own metal oxide from recycled metal. Um, And this is something I've just kind of started doing fairly recently in the last couple of years. Um, I actually didn't know that you could do this before um, but after loads of research and investigating I found this really good method and I've been using this uh, colorant two colorants now in my pottery practice that I've homemade myself from recycled metal. So I want to just talk to you in this episode about exactly how I do that. It's very easy because you only need kind of household ingredients to to make your own metal oxide. So, right, so the first thing to tell you is, you know, why would anybody want to make their own um, metal oxides? It sounds like a lot more effort than (laughs) just buying them from the pottery supplier. Um, And yeah, I suppose it is more effort than buying them from the pottery supplier. Um, But the the thing is with um, commercially made metal oxides is that they're actually um, one of the worst ingredients for the environment um, in pottery. So it's because they take a lot of energy to um, mine and to process. And it's because a lot of the energy used to mine and process them has to come from fossil fuels. So, you know, in terms of like uh, carbon emissions, air pollution, um, uh, there's also a lot of kind of, um, uh, in terms of like the people that mine uh, a lot of the metal oxides, um, you know, artisanal mining might be involved in in mining them. And that's where people are kind of self-employed. They they don't have any self um, health and safety equipment and um, they're not working in, in, in safe, um, you know, hazard free working conditions. It's a very dangerous job. So when, when you make your own metal oxides, you're kind of circumventing that whole supply chain. You're taking metal that's already in the supply chain, you know, as a finished product, you're not kind of, um, you know, mining any more resources to make your metal oxide. You're taking what's there and you're recycling it into um, a new product, a new colorant that you can use in your pottery. So it is, it is a fantastic thing to do. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna just do a health and safety notice like before we um, carry on. So um, metal oxides, like if you're attending a pottery class, they might have told you, you know, they might have been like no eating or drinking, you know, when you're glazing, um, you know, and the reason for that is you really don't wanna be like ingesting um, any metal oxide, you know, a lot of them are like highly toxic basically. So, so the basic rules to keep you safe when you're around metal oxides are like no eating or drinking around them, um, just in case you accidentally kind of get them on your hands and ingest them. Um, it's a great idea when you're actually making your own metal oxides to use uh, gloves so you don't let it touch your skin. It's a great idea because we're cr- creating powder It's a great idea to use an FFP3 face mask that will protect your lungs. Um, And, um, you know, also goggles are a great idea because you you just don't want any metal oxides to be kind of going kind of, you know, in your eyes or in your lungs or anything like that. Um, uh, Yeah. Okay. so safety note is over. Um, Let's just talk about like the two metals I found that um, make fantastic colorants are very easy to make yourself in pottery okay so the first one is iron oxide and um, it suddenly dawned on me at some point that actually rust that you just see um, you know you see a rusty you know gate or you know railings or something um, that's you know made of iron that rust is um, is iron that's oxidized in the atmosphere and that's what rust is And so it got me thinking, it got me thinking, I wonder if, um, you know, you could use this rust as a colorant. And you know what? You absolutely can. And um, it makes a kind of 
beautiful kind of brown color. It works really well with glazes in like a high, you know, with a, like a high flux, say like an ash glaze or something, where the oxide really mixes into the to the glaze as it's fired. Um, so yeah, you get oranges, you get browns, you get some blacks, just like, you know, a commercial um, iron oxide. Um, but I would say you get kind of a more depth of color with using rust because some of it's orange, some of it's brown, some of it's black, you know, if it's very thick. Um, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So the way I make my um, iron oxide from rust is basically I find some rusty metal. Um, so I have like a wheelbarrow on my allotment that is um, very rusty. And what I do is I put on gloves. So safety morning with rust. You really don't want to get cut with rusty metal. Um, so, you know, kind of dirty metal can, can give you um, like a health condition called tetanus. So just be so careful that you don't cut yourself on the rusty metal. And if you do, seek medical advice. Um, just like really look after yourself with like the rusty metal. <laughs> so um, what I do is carefully, so I put on gloves and I carefully just get some sandpaper and I sand off the top layer of the rust into a plastic dish. Um, so just sand it off. You can also scrape it off, say if you had maybe like a, you know, like a stainless steel um, uh, kind of Brillo pad or something like that, um, nest of stainless steel, or, you know, if you had uh, like a wire brush you could use as well, or, you know, just a piece of sandpaper. So you sand it off and you get it into your dish and it's a powder. Um, so yeah, obviously like wear your face mask as well when you're, when you're doing this, you don't want to be breathing in any of that dust. But um, that will um, that powder is iron oxide, and you can use it just like you would use a commercial iron oxide. So it's amazing. So you can add it. You can uh, basically I like use it and mix it with water. Um, sometimes I mix it with a teeny bit of glaze and water, and then I paint it on my pottery. Um, so onto like design. So I've got like a dragonfly pot I do, and I paint it onto like the wings and the body. Um, and it's so beautiful, it comes out like so beautiful. You can also sprinkle it on and then you get kind of like more differentiation in color because some bits are like much thicker than others. You get like very, you know, fine speckles. It comes out more speckledy if you sprinkle it on. Um, and you can also just add it to glazes to color the whole glaze. So iron oxide is usually used a little bit stronger than other oxides. So it's, you know, um, in some glazes it's used to kind of up to like maybe six or 7% in a glaze, or you can, you know, try lower, like maybe 3% of a glaze. Um, so yeah, the world's your oyster, you know, in terms of this colorant, it's very cheap, it's very easy to get hold of, and yeah, it's readily available for you, just kind of all around railings, you know, <laughs> gates. <laughs> um, the only thing to say as well is just make sure your um, iron, iron oxide, make sure your rust doesn't have any paint in, because you really don't want to be like firing paint, you know, so flecks of paint. So try and kind of get the, scrape the paint off or whatever. If there's little bits of paint, you just don't want them in your, in your oxide, um, in your finished oxide powder because um, yeah you really don't want paint sometimes paint can be toxic as well if it's old paint um, okay so let's move on to the second oxide that I actually make myself homemade oxide and that is copper oxide so um, copper oxide um, the but copper actually um, oxidizes itself um, if, you, if you think about like you know in the air in the atmosphere basically so if you think about um, those kind of, you know, those beautiful buildings with like green, you know, roofs, um, you know, church, maybe some church spires or something like that, that have been made of copper. And then in the atmosphere, they've gone that beautiful kind of greeny blue color. And that substance on the copper is known as verdigris. Um, and it's a really ancient pigment that has been used for hundreds of years. And actually, um, uh, painters uh, hundreds of years ago used to use it to actually make the color green in their in their paint so we can use this color this verdigris pigment in pottery we can fire it into our work um, and it makes a kind of greeny blue color it's absolutely beautiful so in terms of the strength of verdigris compared to commercial copper oxide and copper carbonate um, so copper oxide is the strongest um, pigment, copper carbonate is a bit less strong um, in terms of, you know, how much you need to create colour. And then verdigris is probably like the, the you know, even, even more weak colourant, basically. Like it, so it, it does, the thing to say about verdigris is um, you can fire it up to stoneware temperatures and it makes this beautiful green colour. 
Um, but if it's like over fired, the colour can start kind of burning out and kind of disappearing. So that's that's one thing I found. But what I found in a normal stoneware firing, especially if the pots aren't at the very top of the kiln, if they're kind of, you know, a little bit cooler, kind of in the middle of the firing, um, the verdigris comes out really well. It's absolutely beautiful. So, um, yeah, so just to say you might need like a little bit more than you were used to using um you know, in a commercial kind of copper oxide or copper carbonate. Um, but verdigris is really easy to make. So let me tell you how I make it. Um, right, so what I've been doing is, um, <clears throat> so you can make verdigris actually from um, brass because brass has copper in, or you can make it also from, um, you know, just scraps of copper. But I actually make it from copper wire, which I found to be really good for making verdigris. So what I do is I actually, go to my local um, charity shop, which is, um, you know, where people like donate goods and then the charity shop like sells them to people. Um, a lot of people donate goods that are like broken electricals or just like, you know, erroneous cables that don't really fit anything. <laughs> so they basically, I asked them to collect all these things. They actually collected so much stuff for me. Um, it was incredible how much stuff they get that they can't sell. But, um, you know, if it fails, it's kind of electrical tests of safety and stuff. So they collected all these wires for me and I paid them for it. So I paid them more than they would have got, um, you know, if they sold the metal as scrap. So um, yes, yeah, so they collected all these copper wires. And then what I do is I take, I take off the um, outside um, kind of plastic casing of the wire um, and inside you're left with this like very pure, beautiful copper metal. It's absolutely fantastic. So what I do is I collect it all together in a kind of nest and then I put it in a dish. And then what I do is I spray it with a solution of salt and vinegar. And this kind of mimics what would happen naturally um, over time if copper was just left to oxidize naturally in the atmosphere. So what I'm doing is I'm speeding up that process um, and it grows, <laughs> grows the, um, the verdigris really well on the outside of the copper wire. So in a few days, it usually takes about three days to make the verdigris and it's all like, it's all, all around each wire you've got this like greeny blue beautiful colour just um, developing basically on the outside of the copper wire. Then what I do is I put on gloves, my face mask, my um, my eye goggles, and then I crush the verdigris off the wire. So it just basically crushing the wire, the powder falls away, and you're left with this incredible green verdigris powder. It's absolutely incredible. So that is um, an oxide that you can use in your work. So again, just like the homemade iron oxide or just like commercial oxides, you can use it, you can literally mix it with water, paint it on the outside of glazed pottery, um, or you can mix it into glazes, um, and you can sprinkle it on as well. <clears throat> I've had like really good effects just like sprinkling it on. Um, so yeah, so you can add it as, you know, a, as a colorant into glazes and you, you might need to just experiment with like how much you need because it's quite a weak colorant. You might need like perhaps a little bit more than a recipe would suggest for copper oxide or copper carbonate. Um, yeah, but it makes this absolutely incredible, beautiful green color. And again, it works really well with um, glazes which are high in flux. So that would be, you know, glazes which basically can run quite a lot in the kiln. So because I do dishes which are kind of contained, they have the sides, um, when, when it, it can make the glaze run basically more, but it's okay because it's on a flat surface. So I paint it on again to like these dragonfly designs and I paint it onto the wings and because it's flat, you know, it all kind of mixes into the glaze. I've got no problems with it like running down the side or anything like that sticking to the kiln shelf. Um, but that is something that metal oxides can do. They can make your glaze actually like run more. Um, yeah, so it's that both of those uh, metal oxides are, are like just fantastic, very easy to do. They just take a little bit of time, you know, a little bit of time, a little bit of work to make them. But um, how incredible that you can make your own oxides. So, um, yeah, you can, you know, if you're going to like, um, you know, adult education classes or evening classes or something or um, uh, in that, you know, educational setting or community pottery setting, 
um, you know, you may be able to just bring in your own oxides just in a little jar or something. Um, they might let you do that. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you're making your own pottery, this is like a fantastic way, um, you know, at home or something, or you have your own pottery studio. This is a fantastic way of kind of moving away from um, commercial metal oxides where, you know, those supply chains can, uh, you know, not be great for the environment or, you know, people, animals, um, you know, you don't have to, um, you don't have to sort of um, be part of that supply chain where, you know, people are mining them, artisan are miners, or, you know, it's been mined, um, the, the raw ore is being mined, you know, from the earth, you kind of, you're circumventing those supply chains um, and you're recycling metal already there. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode on making your own metal oxides. Like I said, you can do it. It's very achievable. Um, and if you want to learn more, actually, about how to make your own metal oxides, um, that I have, I go through the whole process in uh, Eco-Conscious Pottery Glazing, that book, which is available on the um, Oxford Clay website. Um, I also have a specific video course on making your own metal oxides from recycled metal. So that just goes through, it's just, um, it's a video of me making them so you can see exactly how it's done. It has a workbook with like the recipe and all the different steps and stuff. And, um, and then it's got like also how I actually apply them to pottery. So if you're interested in like learning exactly like how that's done in a video course, that's again available on the Oxford Clay website. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me on this episode and I will see you next time. Happy potting until then. Um, bye. So if you enjoyed that and you're interested to learn more about eco-conscious pottery, head over to the Oxford Clay website, which is www.oxfordclay.co.uk. I can't wait to see you there.